What's up guys? It's Caveman Mining here. Hope everyone is well and having a great day. On today's video, we are going to be showcasing you the PDU from Digital Loggers. And what a PDU stands for is Power Distribution Unit. And the reason why they are suggested versus your traditional surge protector or wall outlet is they are built to handle the load and capacity of high wattage and high amperages from the devices into your wall and your electric sources. This particular unit has a 20 amp capacity, so it is suitable for mining rigs. PDUs are an essential tool uh, for mining rigs and they are highly suggested versus something traditional than a surge protector or just going directly into a wall outlet. The main purposes for the PDUs are they distribute or take in the power uh, from all of your devices and they're able to kind of handle the load and disperse the load. For the sake of the demo, I've actually powered off the uh, rig, removed the PDU out of its mounting slot. Okay guys, so we have taken out the uh, PDU here from the uh, workbench. Just want to show you what it looks like and just cover at a high level some of the features. This thing is pretty much all metal all around except the uh, the front is a plastic casing with a LCD screen, a screen that allows you to get the status and control some of the device and power options here with the buttons. You have the power on, the cycle, and a power off. You will see there is a small antenna that this, uh, this piece of equipment can be controlled uh, via Wi-Fi. See on the left and on the right side we have the mounting brackets for uh, if you want to mount this up to a server case. And in my case on the workbench we've got you know, just some wood that we screw in. Pretty lightweight, not too heavy, uh, but a good quality feel. Starting out here on the back, we've got a uh, LAN 10100 Ethernet. So this again is uh, uh, switched managed, so you can connect, you know, you can power this thing off using the web interface um, to be able to control the device. It has a master reset button, it's got a C19 power in plug. We have a reset and on and off switch. And you'll see each uh, number plug here. These are C13 connected plugs that will plug into your mining rigs or any other of your uh, devices that you want to connect up. Uh, they have a disclaimer of 15 amps maximum per plug, which is an interesting number uh, there uh, because this is actually 20 amps total capacity, I believe is 2400 watts. And my recommendation is to follow the 80% rule, okay? That's gonna probably bring us around just under 2000 watts. If you buy this PDU uh, and you're doing mining and you know very power intensive activities, I would recommend not to exceed probably 2000 watts or maybe like 1920. Uh, watts. Yeah guys, it's a pretty cool little piece of equipment. I've used it for a few months now. Uh, it has worked well. I have not had a single failure. Uh, everything in terms of the network is connected up nicely. Uh, and I've only had to actually use the uh, power cycle feature on the web interface maybe a couple times with the rigs freezing. Now what I'm going to show you guys is where I have this thing mounted and we'll go over some of the uh, logistics of how I got this thing uh, set up. And uh, sorry guys, this may be a little funky that we're doing this with the GoPro. So hopefully you can see it. Uh, if you can see a little dark here, we've got our C19 uh, plug. So we're gonna go ahead and get that plugged up on the back. Our ethernet down here. So we'll get, go ahead and get inside and plug that up as well as plugging in our two uh, C13 cables that will allow us to power up the rig. So we'll get all that plugged in. What we'll do is take a look at some of the settings on the front to see some of the basic features we can do here and then we'll jump into the web interface. So guys, I just want to show you uh, uh, over here that um, this uh, Space Goats uh, power meter is where we have the PDU plugged into. Got the uh, 
L630R uh, plug and it runs through over the wires, got everything running through here and into a uh, C19 uh, plug. So it's L630 to C19, male to female. Obviously I had to get a 25 foot cable just to support everything there. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at this PDU while we're here. We've got the power back up to it so you can toggle through each outlet. And as I mentioned, you can name each individual uh, outlet or plug. You can see 3090 rig, 3070, outlet eight, Raven rig. So. Once you get into the interface, you can customize it, and that's really cool and helpful in terms of like knowing what you're powering on and off. If you uh, hit the on button for uh, each one of those, uh, it's gonna go ahead and try to power each one of those on, and you could just kind of cycle through. Uh, if you hit the two up and down buttons, um, I believe you hold it in, and that allows you to toggle through your setup um, get you your Wi-Fi IP if you connect your Wi-Fi um, You can set your access points your SSIDs uh, your LAN your Mac um, For LAN IP, that's what you're gonna need. I'll probably block that out here just so you guys don't hack me, but <laughs> Just kidding uh, But you'll need that to get into your web interface. So when you have it plugged in I've got my router set up for uh, DHCP. So this thing automatically obtained an address um, I've heard of some people online with this reading some threads where DHCP didn't work. So they actually had to go through and you can actually go in and auto set a static address on here first. And then you can kind of connect up through your router through that uh, address. So just a note. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll go over to the laptop and we'll do a live scenario of just saying if a rig was actually frozen, how to you know, power cycle that rig. So uh, we'll see in just a second. All right, guys, so we are in the interface and we're gonna demo this and show you what is going on. So we're gonna log in, set up our username and password. So as you can see here, uh, it is the Digital Loggers uh, web power switch interface. And the first screen that you get on is the control screen, the Outlook control which you can see you have outlets labeled numbers one through eight. And once we get into the settings, you can name each individual outlet, which is really cool. But uh, what you can do from this interface is actually power cycle, switch on or switch off each of the components. Now, what we'll do before we go into some of the settings, just to showcase what else this can do, I want to simulate a scenario of if our rig froze, we could do a power cycle of the rig to get it back up and running. Now, before we touch anything power related, let's go into Hive OS. Let's go and look at our machine to make sure I did the stop, I did the stop minor so there's nothing hashing at the moment. Uh, we just want to avoid any damage of <laughs> a rig before we power anything off. So uh, what we're going to do is cycle all outlets. Actually, no, we're going to just choose the 6 and 7, which is the uh, PSU connections for uh, the rig. And we're going to hit that in just one second here. And we cycled both of those. And let's see if we get them to come back up. And it looks like power has been kicked on for both of those units. And uh, we will just kind of go through the settings uh, before we go into Hive OS to be sure everything is back up and running. So we can obviously audibly see, audibly hear and see that the rig is back on. The cycle clearly worked uh, in terms of power, but let's go through the setup. And if you hit the setup, this is where you're able to uh, rename your outlets and your controller name if you want, okay? Uh, and you can confirm on the right-hand side, you can set a delay for a password reset, a, lock, a wrong password, uh, which locks you out, uh, on cycle delay, uh, cycle delay, brownout delay, refresh, uh, enable screen refresh, and importantly, this power loss recovery mode, I recently turned that all on because if the power goes out in the house, 
this will make sure that the unit itself comes back on once it senses power. And then of course our rigs have the motherboard bio setting to power state on. So both of those together just kind of get it powered back on in terms of a power loss. So there's no need to cycle anything. Uh, you can mess with the, the URL um, define links. You can change the host name, uh, HTTP ports, all of that stuff. You can change your, your LAN configuration. And I will say this, uh, where IP address is, that is, when that's configured up and you want to log into your interface, you need to punch in the IP of the set uh, PDU on the network. Uh, this has Wi-Fi as well, so you can configure that up uh, as well. And um, it can sense uh, access points, all of that good stuff. You can set your admin login and passwords. You can do uh, some legacy URL and hiding settings and uh, HTTPS certificate um, settings as well. So we want to also look at, there's some scripting settings. We won't go into that event notification, which is pretty useful. I actually uh, read that this thing um, has the ability to hook into Alexa. You can get emailed alerts of things that go on and off, uh, as well as alerting to Alexa. And I think if this, then that, uh, has some capabilities as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, customization, uh, you can customize your uh, page header uh, for company and things of that nature. Uh, external APIs to be able to connect into different applications, which is really cool and different uh, networking uh, configurations. Um, what else? We have the backup and restore uh, functions for network. A bunch of uh, SNMP configurations, SS, uh, SSH configurations, uh, different protocols. Uh, we can upload uh, and download new firmware here. Time and date settings. Uh, you can set um, some auto ping uh, settings on this as well. It has an energy monitor that can sense the temperature and humidity and you can set some alerts as well with, uh, with the temperature and humidity. Um, system log, which is very important. You can see each of the actions that are done and uh, logging out and support. So, you know, pretty powerful in terms of its configuration. So pretty, pretty happy with uh, the ability to control this thing. And uh, I've only actually had to use this twice in a real life scenario. Hopefully you guys don't need to use it often because, you know, obviously just powering your rigs on and off that much <laughs> and especially if you've got high power is not is not good for them. So it's only when necessary and hopefully you're not hashing. Hopefully the rig is truly frozen and, and just not uh, utilizing the cards. But let's let's go back into Hive and uh, let's take a look here. OK, guys, so I believe the rig is back up. Let's get into Hive and take a look. Obviously, we've got the power on, monitor on up top. So let's take a look and see what we get. If we can get all of the cards to report and to look healthy. Let's see. Got some green lights. We've got eight cards showing up here. Team Red Miner, T-Rex going. Get to, looks like all of the cards are trying to fire up here. And I hear them spooling up. You can hear them all spooling up right now. And awesome. Yeah, it looks like we've got all of our cards. Just highlighting the fact on this 3090, uh, I need to replace the thermal pads and probably put some paste on there and get that card cleaned up. Uh, I'm not really able to get a high hash rate, so like 115, 116 seems to be like the spot where uh, it starts to drop shares and ha has issues and gets hot, so we'll address that later on maybe in another video. But yeah, guys, this worked out quite well. Looks like the Space Goats power meter is reporting uh, 1,255 watts. The power cycle clearly worked. Everything's hashing away on the rig. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. Conclusion is 
I'm uh, pretty impressed for the price point of $189. Feedback I would give DLI is if they made this model in a 30 amp uh, package, I mean, like, I would give that a five stars. Out of five stars, I would give it a 4.2. So the high points are that functionality, good quality, and the interface is very easy to use and the setup is easy to use. So my only gripe is that it is a 20 amp. Make me one of these in a 30 amp and I'll, I'll surely demo it for you and I'll even pay for it, <laughs> no problem. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, you know, definitely look into your PDUs. Definitely use a PDU if you have, you know, a considerable uh, power consumption and you want to be safe in terms of managing your devices and powering your devices. So definitely use the PDUs, highly suggested. And guys, if you like the content, please uh, hit the thumbs up and hit that subscribe button uh, to keep the content going. Hope you like what you saw. And uh, with that, guys, uh, I'm going to uh, take, uh, take you out here, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.